Many of us see the dark web as the shady corner of the internet, but it's much more than that. It's also a place where secrets are being brought to light, such as unethical government actions the public should know about. And sometimes the dark web can also protect those who act in the public interest. It can also be a form where offline activities can be organized, like protests. For example, on Facebook's dark web version. Manning's leaked documents revealed some truths that might have led to violent protests in Tunisia. And in a chain reaction, those protests ignited the Arab Spring. One important lesson that governments and diplomats all around the world learned was that they're not untouchable. No secret is ever really safe. So the dark web is also a tool to inform the public about things they won't find in their daily newspaper. And as a journalist, I have to say, that's mostly a good thing, isn't it? Don't we want to know what the government is trying to hide? Apart from those classified secrets that protect innocent lives. Even though there are guns, drugs and other criminal activities on the dark web, I'm out to show you that the dark web isn't all bad. Now I want to find out more about that bright spot in the dark. So let's talk to someone who knows all about it. Lisa Dittmar from Reporters Without Borders. The dark net, or more precisely, usually we talk about the Tor browser, enables people to anonymously research on the internet, to access web pages that might be censored in certain countries. China is probably the most prominent example, North Korea obviously, even more heavily so. But a great number of countries are increasing their surveillance of the internet and their censorship. That could also include Iran or Russia. We definitely see both the use of like VPN technology and the dark net playing a critical role. Uh, also in recent protests in Belarus and Russia. Obviously both states heavily censor the use of social media and they uh, take away accreditations of journalists and so communicating through alternative means and circumventing these uh, state censorship tools uh, has become really critical. When we talk about the dark web we talk a lot about criminals. Is that a threat for you, for your organization, for freedom of the press that this technology also enables uh, a lot of uh, criminal activities? Obviously a technology that can be used both for good and for bad will face criticism but the issue is illegal activity won't stop if we shut down the dark net. I think it's of good merit to discuss both sides, but attacking encryption and attacking the right to stay anonymous online fundamentally means you attack press freedom and you attack people's right to free expression in many parts of the world. I'm a journalist and I feel safe in Germany. I can openly criticize my government if I want to, but many of my colleagues in other countries can't. They have to fear repression, physical violence or even death. The dark web allows journalists and activists to do their job without being restricted, watched or even persecuted by their government. But also other people want or need to browse privately. Did you know that in China and in Iran, for example, people can't access the w.com through the normal internet? Our websites have been blocked for years. That's internet censorship. But DW and other media outlets can be found on the dark web. All you have to do is download the Tor browser and type in this. So I've learned that the dark web has a lot to do with internet freedom. And talking about the Tor browser, the Tor project, which basically started the dark web, is all about internet freedom. Of course, the project didn't mean to create a safe haven for pedophiles and drug dealers. I want to know what Tor is all about, so I'm calling Julius Mittenzwei. He's a lawyer, internet activist and part of the Tor project. The, the vision of Tor project is to defend yourself against tracking and surveillance and circumvent censorship. So wherever you are in the normal internet, you're tracked and, and somebody spies on you and Tor tries to, uh, tries to prevent that.
why is it that people mostly think of drugs, hitmen, pedophiles, and all these terrible things when they hear the term dark web? Because that's what, what is interesting for the press, and, and, and they, they report about that. It's probably unknown that um, more than two million people use Tor every day. The vast majority of the users just use it for legal, totally acceptable um, behavior. The biggest website in the darknet is Facebook. How would you say can um, the Tor network maybe become the new internet of tomorrow? Tor technology does provide what the private windows or the incognito windows of the main browsers like Firefox, um, Chrome or Safari promise. They promise a private mode, but you aren't private. And real um, uh, technologies like Tor, they, they really offer these privacy features and ideally one, one day will be the default. I'm really surprised that the dark web has so many good purposes, but it definitely has an image problem. Somehow we always seem to focus on the criminals. It's important that we stop those who use the technology for illegal purposes, but it's also important to understand that some honorable causes rely on the freedom the dark web offers. So maybe we should really reconsider calling it the dark web. Or what do you think? Are you using the Tor browser? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching.